Hmm, let's see. Brendan Smith is still suspended. Dougie Hamilton is out indefinitely due to a left pectoral muscle tear. And Eric Alla is set to return to the Devils lineup. Seems like another day at the office for the Devils, who have been dealing with a lot of injuries this season. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodora's got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now. What is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, College Hockey Club, a play announcer. Devils are for Pucks and Pitchforks and also part-time credential MIA member Trey Matthews. Okay, so it's been clear that the New Jersey Devils have been hit with the injury bug early on in the season. And unfortunately, it striked once again because I think we all saw the news over the weekend. Dougie Hamilton, he sustained a torn pectoral muscle, so he's going to be sidelined for a few months. I will save that talking discussion for the second segment of today's episode. And I will talk about like how that affects the Devils moving forward. And I also want to bring into the light of Hamilton's impact because I think a lot of people, myself included, give Hamilton a lot of slack defensively. But he's been having a positive impact for Devils in some other key categories. And then to round off today's show, I will end it on a more positive note because Eric Holla is set to return to the Devils lineup real soon. And we all know how useful Hala can be. He's a great depth piece for the Devils. He could definitely be a big spark for the Devils' bottom six. But before we talk about the injuries, the good and bad of it, let's talk about something a little controversial, and that is Brendan Smith. When this episode goes live, the Devils later on tonight are slated to play against the Vancouver Canucks, and all the attention is going to be shifted over towards the Hughes brothers. So Jack, Luke, and Quinn sharing this same sheet of ice Quinn has been having a phenomenal year with the Canucks. He's one of the reasons why Vancouver is one of the top two teams in the Pacific Division. We all know what Luke is doing as a rookie. Jack is trying to get his name back into the running for the Hart Trophy, and he was actually named one of the NHL's uh, stars of the week. He was the third star to be exact because he had uh, three goals, four assists for a grand total of seven points in three game appearances last week. So congratulations to Jack Hughes. So once again, The Hughes brothers are going to be front and center, taking a lot of the attention in tonight's matchup. But we need to talk about a player who's still going to be missing from the Devils lineup because he'll still be serving his suspension, and that is Brandon Smith. So I hinted at the fact that Smith got a penalty at the most inopportune time in one of my more recent post-game recap episodes in which I talked about the Devils getting the overtime victory over the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, the thing is, is that... After Smith got his penalty, he actually had to have a hearing with the NHL, and it was revealed that he was going to be suspended for two games due to him slashing Travis Konecki. And it was somewhat controversial because a lot of people were relating it to the Jacob Truba and Trent Frederick incident that happened a few days prior to what Brendan Smith did because we know what Truba did to Frederick's uh, head, basically took a baseball-like swing to it and Truba only had to face a fine and not a suspension, but Brendan Smith's case is a little bit different. So before we talk about my thoughts on the matter, let's just talk about what happened because once again, Brendan Smith was actually having a pretty good game against the Philadelphia Flyers as a defenseman, but it kind of got overshadowed because late in period three, Konecki, he cross-checked Smith. The, The play was over. Smith had his back turned and Smith out of retaliation. He, he didn't take exception to it. He swung his stick on Konecki, and unfortunately, Smith had to serve a two-minute penalty for slashing, and we all know what happened. Flyers go on the power play. They tie up the game, has to go into overtime. Luke Hughes plays hero. We all know how that story panned out, but there was more to the original story in which Smith slashed Konecki. Now, here was the official assessment. Konecki, he did antagonize Smith a little bit. He was the instigator because he cross-checked Smith when it wasn't really necessary because once again, there was no play. It was the play was over. Both teams were heading towards their respective benches and Konecki just baited Smith essentially. So Konecki, he was fined by league $5,000, which was the 
max fine. But as for Smith, after his hearing concluded, the official assessment was two game suspension, and he was also going to lose $11.4 thousand dollars as a result of missing those two games. Now, here's my thought on the matter. Yes, Smith did, in fact, slash Konecki. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. There's no way to work your way around it because the fact of the matter is that Smith was in control of his actions. It wasn't like he was tangled up with Konecki, and unfortunately, he inadvertently used his stick to hit Konecki. That's not what happened. He was completely aware. He was completely cognizant of what he was doing. But I do take exception to the fact that Konecki did sort of bait Smith a little bit. He did antagonize him. He instigated it. So you can't really hit someone and not expect to get hit back. You can't antagonize someone and not expect some sort of repercussion from that person. It's not just in hockey. It's in life in general. So if if you're the instigator and as a result, you get hit back, you can't be playing victim. So I kind of take exception to that. But obviously, the league has their rules and regulations. So I'm not really going to argue the suspension for Smith because it was a little bit of a dangerous play to use your stick to swing at another opponent. So not going to argue that. And I'm a little murky on Konecki basically just instigating the situation in the first place, but not really going to argue the penalties assessed to both respective players. But the one thing I do want to ask the league is this. Why was Jacob Truba only assessed a $5,000 $5,000 fine. Now, here's the thing. $5,000 is the maximal fine. So I'm not saying like he should be fined like $10,000 because that's impossible. That's not how that works. I'm just saying like, if we think about it, Jacob Truba, he took a baseball-like swing to Trent Frederick's head and that could have been dangerous. And I looked at the replay multiple times. Yes, Frederick did have his hand on Jacob Truba's sweater. But at the same time, I don't think it constituted for Truba to use his stick and swing it like he's trying to hit a home run. And unfortunately, Frederick took a a, a stick to the head. So Truba is making $8 million this year, and he's only fined $5,000. The point I'm trying to make is that I'm not, I'm not going to argue the money situation. I'm just saying, like, Truba should also be suspended for his action because his action was also very dangerous, and it could have been costly towards Frederick. So I think Truba actually did admit that he he has to be a little better about controlling himself because Truba does have a history of sometimes losing his temper and losing his cool and maybe doing some dirty plays. But no, a $5,000 penalty is is a slap on the wrist for someone like Truba, who's being paid uh, annually $8 million this year. So basically the point I'm just trying to make is that why is someone like Brendan Smith suspended for two games for his slashing, but yet You get someone like Jacob Truba, and he just gets a slap on the wrist. And I'll use another example. Connor Clifton literally concussed Nico due to his cross check on Heischer's head. And Clifton had to be suspended a couple games. But why does Truba only get a slap on the wrist in this sort of manner? I think Truba also should have been suspended, but that's just my two-cent opinion. So I'm not going to argue the rules and regulations of the league. I get it. I'm not going to argue the fines either. The fines are what they are. And Truba got the max fine. But the thing is, is like Truba should be suspended just to be taught a lesson as to how dangerous that could have been. So I talked about it in my previous episode against the Flyers, where the referees failed to call an automatic icing. And as a result, Luke Hughes almost got seriously hurt by Garnett Hathaway. So I talk about protecting the players. You need to protect the players in that case. I feel like there's sometimes a double standard here. So that's my opinion. And that's how I'm going to close out today's segment. So Once again, it sucks that Smith got suspended, but unfortunately, the rules are the rules, and Smith did cross the line. Hockey is a contact sport. I know human instinct probably kicked in, but you got to be a little better about controlling your actions. So let me know what you guys think about the manner. What what did you think about the suspension assessed to Smith? And what did you think about the Truba hit in general? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. But yeah, I just want to leave it there and just say, like, look, I'm all for protecting the players. I'm all for... Uh, basically having these rules to make sure that everyone plays the the game safely. But at the same time, you can't just be like pick and choose when to give someone a harsher penalty when they obviously also cross the line. So we'll leave it there. And before we transition into the next segment, let me tell you guys about Indeed. So Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills, When you could do all that with Indeed, find top talent with Indeed, suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed, Instant Match, Assessments, and Virtual Interviews. 
So once again, if you are a small business or whatever the case might be, you definitely need Indeed. Indeed knows where you're growing your own business. You have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that meet your job must requirements. So you guys know what to do. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing now available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Okay, so let's talk about Dougie Hamilton, who's been a big talking point the last few weeks on my show specifically, because I remember after the Columbus Blue Jackets game, I brought up the the question, should Dougie Hamilton be a scratch? And I said, nope, I don't think that's a smart idea for Devils. I don't think they're a better team without his services. But unfortunately, looks like they're going to be without his services for a long period of time, because as we all know, in the game against the New York Islanders, Hamilton did not suit up in period three. Lindy Ruff revealed that Hamilton was dealing with an upper body injury, and unfortunately, he just couldn't continue. So we were waiting for what the official assessment was going to be, and it was later revealed that Hamilton sustained a torn pectoral muscle, and he actually had to have surgery to repair it. So to give you an idea as to how long the recovery process for something like that takes, I'm no doctor, but based on the research I did, considering the fact that he needed surgery for it, I'm going to guess that it's a high-grade assessment. So he's going to be out for a few months. I think the recovery process could be anywhere from three to six months based on all the information I was able to gather up. So Hamilton is either going to be out for the rest of the season or he's going to return close to playoff time. The reason I say he's either going to be out for a season or close to playoff time is that if the Devils are no longer in playoff contention, I don't think they're going to try to bring back Hamilton. There's no point. But for the playoffs, I'm sure they would like to have him back because he's one of the top defensemen in the league. And this really sucks for Dougie because he's never been healthy in a Devils uniform because if we remember – his first year with the Devils, he sustained a broken jaw. He was also dealing with a few other uh, injuries that were hindering him. So he didn't really get off to the best of starts in his Devils tenure. And then second year, we saw towards the end of the playoffs, he wasn't really himself. And then it was revealed that he actually had to have surgery on his wrist. So there was another injury thing that he had to deal with. And then obviously right now, torn pectoral muscle, he's going to be out for a few months. So a lot of people are having an interesting discussion and a lot of people have been saying like the devils are better without Dougie because the thing is a lot of people are quick to blame him on defense because the devil's defense this year for lack of a better term has been atrocious. There's been a lot of odd man rush situations. There's been a lot of times in which the devils are put onto an Island. They leave their net minders out to dry. The defense has been very bad for devils and Dougie Hamilton does share some of the blame. But the thing is, is like I said this in one of my uh, recent episodes from a few weeks ago in which I said that the Devils should not make Dougie Hamilton a healthy scratch because they're not better without his services. So here's the thing, guys. I know Dougie is not a good defensive minded defenseman, and that's just how the modern NHL is. But the one thing I can give Hamilton credit for is that whenever he screws up defensively, he knows how to redeem himself offensively because in 20 game appearances, he has 16 points. He has five goals and 11 assists. So that's actually a decent amount of scoring coming off his stick. And obviously, he was leading all Devils defensemen in scoring. And now you just lost a big chunk of that. How are you going to replace that? Well, the Devils did call up Shimon the Mets, but he's just going to be a rookie. Like, do you really want to put that kind of pressure on his shoulders? And we'll talk about that momentarily. But another thing that I want to factor in is that Dougie is one of the reasons why the Devils' power play has been elite to start off the year because he was actually tied with Tyler Toffoli and Jesper Bratt for most power play goals this season with four. And he's also fifth on the team in power play assists with four as well. So Dougie has been a big help on the man advantage for the Devils. So I know we rave about Luke Hughes and what he's been able to do on the first power play unit, but I said it a few weeks ago. I said that Luke is the better playmaker, and which is why he's on the first power play unit. But Dougie is the better shot creator. He's the better person who can get a goal on the power play as proven because, once again, he was tied with Toffoli and Brad for most power play goals. So having him off of the power play, that can actually hurt the Devils in some sort of way. So 
I want to factor that in as well. And then when we talk about his defense, his defense is not good, to, to say the least. Like, I'm not even going to try to defend him in this case. But some of the Devils' other defensemen also haven't been having really good years. But I don't really hear a lot of people complaining about them. So Jonas Siegenthaler, he hasn't really looked sharp to start off this year. Same with Kevin Ball. And we had big expectations for both respective players. So that's my thing. Yes, Dougie is not a good defensive-minded defenseman but at least he knows how to redeem himself in some other categories. So that's my thing, which is, are the Devils a better team without Dougie? My opinion is no, they're not a better team. In fact, now you have a big gaping hole in your defensive pairing. And the thing I've been talking about for the Devils is that they need a lot of depth at, at the defensive position and losing Dougie, now you got to try to fill up those minutes. You got to try to clog up those defensive pairings and, when we look at the current defensive pairings for the Devils, your top defensive pairing is Jonas Siegenthaler, Shimon the Mets, then Kevin Ball, John Marino, Colin Miller, Luke Hughes. So are you going to have two rookies, Luke Hughes and Shimon the Mets, do a boatload of the scoring on the defensive side of things? Because the defense is going to get worse before it gets better, in my opinion, because you have a lot of inexperience on your defensive pairings. You don't really have much depth to work with, and you're kind of spread thin in this category. So Honestly, I don't think the Devils get any better with Dougie Hamilton off the rink, but now they're going to have to try to find a way to work through it. So a lot of people are wondering, what's next for the Devils? Like, how do they move on past this? Because once again, it's not like Dougie is going to miss a few weeks. He's going to miss a few months. Well, I think this is going to push Tom Fitzgerald to try to make a move for a defenseman quickly. So unfortunately, the Devils struck out with Nikita Zadorov. He was actually dealt to the Canucks and he adds way more size to those defensive pairings for, for uh, Canucks. I'm actually looking forward to watching that, but digressing a little bit, something the Devils could also do is that they can transfer Dougie from the IR to the LTIR so that can free up some money. That, that gives the Devils $9 million to play with. Maybe they can add some more depth defensively, or maybe they can go after another goalie. But Basically, guys, the, the point I'm just trying to make is that Dougie is a huge asset for the Devils, and I get that he has his mistakes defensively, and trust me, I will highlight them on this show, but he is still a very good player. Make no mistake, and he is one of the reasons why the Devils are in the position that they are currently in, because the Devils don't become buyers at the trade deadline. They don't get these players like Tyler DeFoley come the offseason. That signing back in 2021, that was the first domino piece to fall in the Tom Fitzgerald era to basically shapeshift the Devils' culture and their direction. So it sucks, but the Devils are just going to have to move past it. And I feel bad for Dougie because it seems like his Devils tenure has been filled with nothing but injuries. It's been a lot of good, but it seems like he gets injured a lot. So We'll see what happens, but just remember, I don't think the Devils are a better team without Dougie. I'm sure they would love to have him back, so speedy recovery, and obviously things are still very fluid with modern technology. Maybe we could see Dougie return sooner rather than later, but we'll see what happens. But before we transition to Eric Halla and end today's episode on a more positive note, let me tell you guys about Sleeper because I'm still in the midst of my fantasy football season, but Let's talk some hockey. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Jack Hughes could score 50 goals. Devils could hoist the Stanley Cup at some point, And you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for our Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy contests. So you don't just have to do fantasy Hockey, you can also do football, basketball, baseball, college football, and all that on Sleeper. And all you have to do is pick studs like Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Jesper Brad, Vitek, Vanacek, who will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight-player stats. You heard me, Devils fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. To start, so start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See sleepers. Terms of use for details and locational availability. Okay, so to close out today's show, let's talk about the possibility of Eric Kala returning to the Devils lineup because it was revealed that he was practicing with the Devils in Vancouver and he anticipates to play 
during this four game road trip for New Jersey. So Amanda Stein put out on the X app and said that Hala was quoted to say, I feel good. I feel ready. Lindy Ruff followed up by that and, and was quoted to say an encouraging opportunity to play tomorrow or today when this episode goes live. But anyway, it would be great to have Eric Hala back into the lineup because I think it's clear that the Devils have been missing a lot of depth pieces and getting Hala back into the lineup can definitely uh, help them in more ways than one. And I think when we talk about underrated assets for Devils, I think we still need to factor in that Hala actually has 12 points in 18 game appearances. So he's off to a way better start than he was last year. So he wanted to show everyone that he's a capable scorer. Well, he's been showing it. So, and we know what he could do on special teams. We know what he could do in the faceoff department. And we know what he could do defensively as well. So a phenomenal two-way player for this Devils team. And I think just getting him back to the lineup can definitely help the Devils more ways than one. And let's just hope that this is the last time in which the Devils get a player back, but no one goes back on to uh, injury protocol or something like that. So I know things are a little murky for the Devils, but once again, just a small win streak can do wonders for them, but they got to win their next two games. So you got the Vancouver Canucks tonight. Then you got the Seattle Kraken a few days later. I will actually be at Climate Pledge Arena covering that game. So any Devils fans in the Seattle area, if you see me walking around, don't be afraid to come up and say hi. Love meeting new people. But anyway, these next few games are going to make or break the Devils, in my opinion, because now is the time to try to turn your season around, get back into the win column more consistently, rack up the points. They've been doing so. Obviously, they suffered a bit of a big loss to the San Jose Sharks, losing 6-3. That cannot happen. You let the Sharks run all over you. It was a trap game. So the Devils got to be a little bit more careful. And I think that was the first road win of the season for the Sharks as well. So not really all that good. But yeah, so for, for New Jersey, if they really want to turn their season around, they've got to continue to do what they've been doing, which is just winning more consistently. But you've got to win those games that you're supposed to win. So that Blue Jackets game and that Sharks game, hopefully the Devils don't toss and turn come the season end. So let me know what you guys think. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on the Brendan Smith suspension, Dougie Hamilton's injury, and what are you hoping from Eric Halla? Do you think he can definitely be a big help for the Devils on a bottom six? Because once again, he's a very underrated goal scorer, and I don't think enough people are talking about the season he's been having. So curious to hear your guys' thoughts, so leave a comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on a podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMat4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.